Okay. Um, so thank you, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's a great opportunity for me um, to be here today with the professors and also with all our audiences and um, you know, to provide all of you a snapshot on what EY, as a professional firm, has observed on some of the most recent development trends in GBA. I myself am actually working in the financial services sector, so I will spend more time in talking about the focal financial services prospects and opportunities that we would love to pay more attention to in the next 12 to 24 months. Now, I'm not going to introduce a lot of these facts about GBA, which all of us should have heard quite frequently these days. Now, I would like to reiterate two points to all our audiences. Now, first, it is very crystal clear, according to our China government policy, GBA is an area which is committed to be opening up, growing, and progressing based on an innovation-driven development, just like what Professor has mentioned, and technology-oriented business models and patterns. Now, second, the objective of GBA establishment is to really link up and integrate the three areas, Guangdong, Macau, and China, together, fully leveraging the composite advantages, promoting the coordinated regional economic development, so that it can become a world-class, world-class Bay Area, like what is existing right now in San Francisco, or Tokyo, or New York. Whether it be it in GDP generation, or the quality of environment for the people to live in, or business to set up. And I personally believe it is definitely achievable. Now, when you look at this comparison, uh, there are actually a few points I want to highlight to boost our own confidence in Hong Kong here, and as part of the GBA. We have a vast area and population which is absolutely an advantage for growth and supply of resources. When you look at the GDP share of the country, that is only currently 10.8% of the entire China GDP. So that means there is a big room that we can climb up. And definitely, our GBA is supported by Fortune Global 500 companies. We have actually currently 20 Fortune 500 companies headquartered in GBA, which is definitely not bad, given we are actually at the commencing stage right now in developing GBA. Now, so this, so this is an, our entire uh, GBA map that you have seen probably quite for a number of occasions. In my remaining speech, I'm to focus this on only on two places, Hong Kong and Shenzhen. Um, this is especially also because these two places are the major focuses in the region to develop the financial services, which is more technology oriented. Not just to make these two cities earn more money by themselves, but also to really establish a strong fundamental financial services hub, which can actually enable the entire GBA region to flourish and progress. And sitting here in Hong Kong, I'm especially very happy about this, this fact because Hong Kong definitely will be a key player in this establishment. And in fact, it will be playing a very important role. Now, before I, I actually step in and talk about uh, you know, a few more items that I want to concentrate and focus on more detailly about financial services, I would want to bring out one message, which is, I think is important for all the audiences, which you may actually think a little bit more, and which may inspire some questions later on, which you can actually ask us as the panelists later on. Within the GBA, there is theoretically an opening up of the entire region. There is also supposedly to be free movements. Now, if these things cannot ultimately achieve, you can imagine the Bay Area progress will be hindered and delayed to a definite extent. Uh, in a lot of my conversations with the uh, government officials, regulators, or industry players in both China and Hong Kong, we talk about and pay a lot of attention to these few aspects that I mentioned here on this slide. The money movements, which affects our investment potentials, the talent movements, which affects, which is really the driving forces to, for the business to grow and the expertise to really get exchanged across the region. The technology movement, to what extent can we really share the data which is useful for the businesses among, you know, within this region? And the resources and logistics movement, the real transportation of people, the real transportation of goods, and the infrastructures needed to accompany such movements. Now, I cannot continue to say more about this sort of like, you know, free movements in this region, 
other than the fact that I'm aware there's a lot of consultation, a lot of studies actually going on, papers written, which have been forwarded to you know, different regulators and stakeholders in the region to study and really make reference to. Uh, but I, this will be a journey, I think so, and it will take some time to, uh, to be successful. But I think if the global world every day is actually moving in such a vibrant manner, like what we are observing nowadays, I'm quite positive that there will be dynamic developments coming up um, you know, with all these aspects in a short period of time. The key word for success here is collaboration, just like what we have you know, talked about before with the, you know, from, by the professors. How can really the cities, you know, the 9 plus 2, in the region collaborate? And really, especially for Hong Kong, how Hong Kong can better collaborate with the rest of the region and make good use of our own advantages? Now, um, as a firm, UI, we have actually a task force set up on GBA, and we are identifying focuses in this region. Now, this is an ongoing process because, as it is expected, there will be dynamic, dynamic developments ongoing, and we'll have different campaigns to address what the region is actually requiring on, which translates into opportunities not only for UI, but also for Hong Kong as a whole. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on these three on major three financial services areas, which I think you will have interest to um, hear more. The first one is the FinTech and Digital. Now, uh, this, is, uh, this is a slide that I, I, I want to show to you guys. Um, I think it's really good. You can see really China is experiencing a FinTech explosion in, in these recent years. And, and, and as you can all sort of like understand, US, the United States of America really right now is very afraid of us, afraid of China. And this is, in fact, not a piece of joke, OK? Because you can see how big this circle is, all right? the China circle. You can see the FinTech unicorns are really humongous if you compare that to USA and to the rest of the world. Um, the, the next slide, I would hope our audience just, just, forget a, just forget the slide that just Professor Wu has shown, because this is another index, which is actually compiled and sort of researched by university in, in, in China, which may show a little bit of you know, different picture uh, or rankings. But coincidentally, if I correct, if I do not, uh, uh, if, I, if I remember correctly, Hong Kong is also 13 in ranking. So that is actually coincidentally, coincidentally the same. But anyway, we can, we can actually show from this, from this um, sort of global, uh, global FinTech Cup Index that uh, actually the Yangtze River Delta, which is you know, the Alibaba's headquarters area, uh, that is actually number one. Uh, we're actually talking about, you know, with this index, they're actually saying um, that it's actually be even better than Silicon Valley, all right? And, um, I'm sorry. And actually, our GBA, if you look at it, the number five, the GBA actually, in fact, is not bad at all. We rank number five. So we're doing better even than New York, Sydney, or London, as we are shown by this index. Um, Okay. okay. Now, uh, uh, this one is important because uh, we are, I, I'm actually doing a bit of advertising as well. <laughs> um, this is actually UI. Our firm survey, UI is actually also the topest performer among all innovation service providers in terms of um, service offering and strategy contribution, as you can see there you know, at the top. Now, I guess this is also one of the reasons why I have to say it, all right? Because this is also one of the reasons why we are actually um, uh, being solely invited right now uh, to assist in a very important project currently conducted, which we call the GBA cross-border regulatory sandbox. Okay, our Bay Area is one of the most complex. Our Bay Area is one of the most complex uh, Bay Areas. There is actually one country, three systems, and there is actually different social, economic systems consisting of different law, different currencies, and customs. This study is led by actually renowned um, Professor Liu Ming Kong, uh, with full support from Tianhai Financial Bureau and the uh, Shenzhen PBOC. And actually all the study results, I believe as of now, have been forwarded to the top government bodies, including PBOC and SAFE, etc. Now the study actually scope includes questions, comments raised by regulators, industry players in both Guangdong, Macau, and uh, Hong Kong. Um, and a lot of them are actually covering four aspects which I mentioned before on the slide. Now, all these government policies, regulatory measures, and other infrastructures refinement would have to be very much studied carefully to allow appropriate execution within this GBA area. 
and that is what what is actually emphasized by the uh, by the officials already. Now, all in all, we do expect this cross-border sandbox will be implemented soon, and new technologies and innovations will then be tested in those sandbox before formal launching. Now, the uh, sandbox mechanism is the key now, which everyone is paying attention to, because it will really affect the direction of how you know digital and fintech business will be going on in this region. The second area is the Treasury and Financial Center development, what we call, probably you are aware of, the uh, Corporate Treasury Center. Now, I'm not going to elaborate all the uh, tax subsidies or uh, the advantages that the groups can enjoy if they're really using and selecting Hong Kong as the Corporate Treasury Center, because this has all been known for a while. Now, what I believe is, as the policy on GBA right now is getting more um, formal and clearer, um, I do believe there will be uh, a lot more actually groups selecting and picking Hong Kong as their corporate center. Now, I, I guess Hong Kong, we have always been, you know, leader in the financial service center role. We do have the edge of experiences and expertise, which I think we should really take more proactive actions to push this to happen and encourage more companies to set up the CTC here. Um, there are lots of treasury activities which, you know, um, happening in the CTC which will have to make use of the skill sets, the talents and expertise in all these like treasury functions, asset management, pooling of cash, swapping, financing, fundraising, etc. Now this financial treasury hub concept is, well personally, I think is of utmost importance to the growth of GBA and Hong Kong. Because um, uh, that was, would be very important for the entire GBA to really flourish. Um, I know our Hong Kong MA and actually our other associations like Treasury Market Associations and IACCT, they've all been promoting and working very hard to promote this. And I am quite positive that the setting up of such CTC will see an increase in the next 12 to 24 months. Now the final thing is product development, insurance and wealth management. Um, I have been actually... Um, all along talking more on the prospect of insurance product and wealth management products in this area because I see a strong need in the GBA area on these products. But today I am actually wanting to promote on another area which is called green financing. Now it has been actually strongly emphasized by our President C, the prominence of the green financing to support development of Hong Kong into a green finance center, internationally recognized certification center for bonds to support Guangzhou in developing a pilot zone for green finance reform innovation. And actually, they are also possibly establishing a very uh, 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 creative, innovative uh, future exchange that use carbon emission as the uh, trading commodity. That is you know, something that can exp happen later on. Now, a lot of expectations in the green area We actually would expect to see large amounts of green projects and activities actually happening in this GBA area. And in fact, we, you has been involved in it. You know, we have been seeing setting up of green funds, we have been doing audits, and we have been doing attestation work for uh, ESG also in China. So uh, I guess the green financing will be the next major driving machine of funds and uh, bonds growth in the future. Now, this marks the end of my presentation. I, I see a lot of prospects in the region, and it's up to us right now, especially with Hong Kong, how we can actually, as a whole in this, set, in this city, can collaborate and collaborate even better to enable a women's situation for all the cities in